since I made a project video, but I'm super excited about this one because I hope that this project can be as useful for you as it has been for me. I think sketching is a really useful tool and it's a super important part of my creative process, but sometimes I need a little guidance in my sketchbook. So I made these custom templates for my sketchbook for drawing storyboards and thumbnail sketches. Storyboards are really useful for visualizing video ideas or animation ideas. And if you don't know what thumbnail sketches are, don't worry, I'll explain those a little bit later in this video. If you're following me on Instagram, you may have seen the original laser cut version of these templates that I made a while back, but I recently updated and improved the design and made 3D printable versions as well. And I'm making all of these files available so you can print them for yourself. Of course, your sketchbook may be a different size than mine. So first let's look at how I made these so you can make your own from scratch if you'd like, and then I'll show you how I use them. To make my custom templates, I started by measuring my sketchbook. And this is just my favorite notebook by Baron Fig. By the way, this isn't a sponsored video or anything, I just love their notebooks. So then I hopped into Adobe Illustrator and made a grid of one inch squares for the thumbnail sketches. And I did six rectangles for the storyboards with a line underneath each one for shot notes. Then I rounded the corners of the templates to match my sketchbook's pages, and that's pretty much it. It was really quick to design these. My first version of these templates were laser cut out of 3mm acrylic, and that made for a great rigid template that looks great, but it can be a little tricky to get your pencil into that tiny slot for the line under the storyboards, so I wanted to fix that. Now, I could have just made that opening a little bit wider, but I thought it would be even better to add a bevel, which you can't do with laser cutting, and that's when I decided to make a 3D printable version. To make the 3D model, I simply exported my original Illustrator designs as DXF files and imported them into Fusion 360. Of course, you could build the whole template in Fusion 360 if you prefer. I just happened to have started this project in Illustrator. Once imported, I did a 2mm extrude with a negative 30 degree taper, and that gave me a nice bevel on all the edges in one operation. Then I sliced the models in Cura and 3D printed them on my artillery sidewinder, and they turned out great. Now I can use any pencil, even a wooden blackwing pencil fits into that slot easily. And now I can set up the pages in my sketchbook for storyboards or thumbnails really quickly and get right to sketching. I also made an ultra thin, super portable version of these templates. They print faster and they can be tucked into the book so they can live right with your sketchbook. They're a bit flimsier though, and they're a little more fiddly to use, so I definitely prefer the rigidity of the two millimeter version. But I'm putting all the files for all of the versions up on my website and on Thingiverse, so you can make whichever version you like. I'll also post a link to the sketchbooks that I designed these templates to fit into.
Now, using the storyboard template is pretty straightforward. You can draw out the frames or scenes of your animation or movie, and it's really useful when scripting or building a narrative. I find that these are also really helpful for planning presentation slides. But you might be wondering why I wanna to draw tons of little squares in my sketchbook. Well, these are for thumbnail sketches, and the concept of thumbnail sketches is something that I learned when I was studying graphic design in school. It's a tool for generating ideas at the beginning of your process, and it works like this. Each of these squares will hold one thumbnail sketch. Each thumbnail sketch is one idea or one take on your main idea. And the exercise is to sit down and fill the entire page with little thumbnail sketches and to do it pretty quickly. So only spend about one minute on each sketch. Try to make each sketch different than the last one, and it takes some effort to do this, but that's the point. You are forcing yourself to think way past your first idea and come up with lots of different possible directions. The sketches are small, so you can do them quickly, and you can't get into too much detail or get too attached to any one idea yet. And when you filled up the page, you can look back and evaluate your ideas. If after 20 or 30 thumbnail sketches, your first idea is still the best one, then hey, you've proved it. And if it isn't, then you found something better or maybe several better ideas. I generally find that my first row of thumbnails are pretty obvious and my ideas get more interesting in the middle of the page where I've forced myself to think of something else. By the last row, my brain is pretty tired and I may have exhausted my concept, but don't skip the last row. It's important to go all the way to the end with this technique. Give it a try and see what you think. It takes a few tries to get into it, but it's a super valuable exercise. And sometimes it's just the jumpstart I need to get going on a project. So if you'd like to make these yourself, check out the links in the description of this video. And if you make them, I would love to see. So please find me on Instagram, I'm at Sophie Wong Makes, and on Twitter, I'm at Sophie Wong. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you again soon. Thank you.